Now and into Moines Force this morning, and we'll hear from Senator McCain in just a moment. Now, Senator Hillary Clinton. She's hoping that endorsement from the Des Moines Register will put her over the top in Iowa, where she is battling for the lead. She joins us in Iowa's capital this morning. Senator Clinton, good morning to you. Good morning. It's great to talk to you. Thank you. Despite this endorsement from the Des Moines Register, as we mentioned in the piece, uh, your husband, the former president, said it would be a miracle if you win the caucus in Iowa. So where is all of your momentum gone from six weeks ago? Well, I think uh, we have tremendous momentum. I feel it every day. Obviously, the Des Moines Register uh, endorsement was a great validation of my campaign and my candidacy. It made the case that what we need right now in America is proven leadership, the kind of leadership that uh, I've offered making positive change for 35 years. And as I travel around uh, Iowa, I am sensing a lot of uh, energy and support for me. Uh, I feel very good about uh, where my campaign is. And, uh, you know, I'm always in it for the long run. I am doing what uh, I'm doing now to reach out and make my case. We're on a 99-county blitz. We're blanketing the state of Iowa with lots of people who have been my friends my entire life and people who okay. have actually experienced the kind of right. changes I've made. So, Senator, if, if people look at the last six weeks and they might question how Hillary Clinton responds to a crisis or how she handles pressure, and they might point to the fact that you complained about the all-boys network of presidential <clears throat> politics in the wake of the Philadelphia debate, they would see, they would see your, your husband complaining about media coverage of you. They'd see your campaign raise the past drug issue and use by Barack Obama or question him for his ambition. And they might say, well, this is really what we don't like about politics. Is that fair? Well, I don't think that's at all an accurate representation of my campaign. You know, campaigns are like life. Uh, you know, some days are perfect, some days aren't. Uh, but what really matters is where you're headed, what you do when uh, you suffer uh, some kind of, uh, you know, problem, how you put yourself back on track. Do you and, dispute that you know, those I've were responses to your... Long but time. Senator, I'm sorry, you said that was unfair. You dispute that those were how you handled things in the, in the wake of hitting that rough patch? Well, you know, I'm going to let voters decide that, not the press. I'm going to let voters make up their minds. And what I see happening here and across the country is that voters are responding very positively to my campaign. Uh, I'm a proven leader. That's what the Des Moines Register said. That's what a lot of my supporters say. People who come over to my campaign to make endorsements like yesterday Senator Bob Kerry uh, did and on Friday Congressman Leonard Boswell of Iowa. So I feel very good and I've been through this before. So, you know, I really don't pay a lot of attention to uh, the day to day. I'm looking at what the trends are, what we're doing, what kind of response what? we're getting. It's more for me kind of a touch and a feel and I feel really good. Right, well, let's, I feel let's, very confident and optimistic. Let's talk about a key issue that you raised on the campaign trail and that's experience. It was actually again your husband, the former president, who said that Barack Obama as president would be rolling the dice with America's future. So assuming you agree with that, let's be clear, an Obama presidency is a risk to what? America's national security, America's economic health, what precisely? Well, I would ask people to read the Des Moines Register editorial. Basically, what they said is that we need a proven leader. We have tough times. Right, but rolling the dice. What does rolling the, the dice mean? We know what the well, register said. Well, but I think that uh, that's one of the principal uh, cases for my candidacy. You know, if you want to know what changes I'll make, look at the changes that I have but already made. what's the risk of Everybody an Obama talks presidency? About change. Everybody talks about change in this campaign. Some people think you get change by demanding it. Some people think you get it by hoping for it. I think you get it by doing really hard work, and that's what I've Senator, done. Senator, you're that's not really addressing this question, though. Your husband said it'd be rolling the dice with America's future if he were elected. What is the risk to America if Barack Obama is the president? You know, he not only said that, but the Des Moines Register editorial implied that. And a lot of people are making up their minds among real candidates, not abstractions, not hypotheticals. And I welcome that scrutiny. I welcome that kind of, uh, you know, examination of our records, our experience, our qualifications, our vision for the country. Mm -hmm. That's what elections are about. Okay. You know, this is uh, but the way elections you're, you're, are as you move toward decision making. All right, so you're, you're choosing not to, not to answer that question. Let me ask you another, another issue that well, has to I'm, do with... I'm doing... No, no, wait a minute. No, wait a minute. I am uh, making the case for my candidacy. Right, but it, I but am your very husband, happy but that Senator I have, I have very strong clear supporters statement. and I have editorial mm -hmm. support. Well, you know, I think that uh, voters will have to judge us, and that's what I welcome. I invite people to do that. I want to ask you another question about the, the former president uh, on the issue of 
not only uh, experience, but also his concerns about the campaign. The last couple of weeks have been dominated by headlines, not about your policy positions or where you would take the country, but about what your husband thinks about how your campaign is being run. Has that been a distraction? No, it really hasn't, because there is... Uh you know, no basis to it. I, I know that uh, in a campaign, people have lots of advice and opinions, and I welcome that. But it's my campaign, just like it will be my presidency, as it was when he ran and when he was president. And what I do every day is make the best decisions that I can make, taking a lot of good ideas that people give me. I'm very happy with my campaign. I think we have a great team, and they're doing tremendous work. And I think that uh, we're going to do quite well. And. What I don't do is get distracted by, frankly, you know, all the horse race, who's up, who's down. I, you know, I really have never paid much attention to that. I'm not going to start now. I don't think that's the way a leader uh, tries to lead. I think you set a course, you make adjustments if they're necessary, but you don't get knocked off course just because people are talking about it. My view is I have a big job to do. This country deserves a leader who will make the changes that we need, and I intend to be that leader. Senator Clinton, thank you very much for your time this morning. Thanks. Great to talk to you. Thank you. Senator Edwards has really a very straightforward question here, which is, will you continue to take money from lobbyists? Yes, will you take I will. This position? I will. Thank because, you. you know, a lot of those lobbyists, whether you like it or not, represent real Americans. They actually do. What Bill said, this is not about the past. This is about the future. This is about whether we believe this system works. I mean, we are here in Philadelphia where the founding fathers decided that the power, the sovereign power in this government should not reside with the rich and the powerful. It ought to reside with the people. And everybody in America can see what's happening now. We don't have universal health care because of drug companies, insurance companies, and their lobbyists. The reason we haven't tackled global warming is because of oil companies, power companies, and their lobbyists. And the question is, what are we going to do for our children? I mean, I'll say this to every voter who's watching this debate. Are you, listen, we've all stood by and watched this happen. That includes me. I'm guilty. Guilty as charged. But the question is, are you willing to look your children in the eye tonight? and say, I'm going to turn this mess over to you. Because if you turn your back on the incompetence and the corruption that exists in Washington today, that's exactly what you're saying. You're saying, I'm going to let my children and my grandchildren take care of that.